that's license. That underlying fallacious presupposition that freedom is the ability to do whatever you want to do. I have a very highly profound theological word for that. Horse manure. <laughs> freedom is not being able to do whatever you want to do. That's license. Where I say, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I'm a law unto myself. I'm God. Who says that? Satan. Lucifer. The one who brought evil and death into the world through a lie. You become one of his disciples when you become a disciple of lies. You become a protagonist of the culture of death. When you buy into the lie and begin to promote things like artificial contraception, abortion, and euthanasia, you become an unwitting accomplice in the works of death. And so many in the church have done, from the simplest lay person to bishops and theologians, some of them have done it and continue to do it. But the Lord is the Lord. And the day of reckoning is fast approaching. The butt kicking is coming. And is even here as we speak. You don't believe me? Read the headlines. If your conscience doesn't bother you, then perhaps the multi-million dollar legal settlement will. God can effect his designs in a lot of different ways. And if we don't come along peacefully and change our mind and our heart, he'll slap us upside the head with a two-by-four to get our attention. Guess what? That's what's happening. In case you don't know it, that's what's happening. And you know what? Although I am saddened, as you are, at the sight of it, I'm grieved by it. I'm even discouraged by it. I have to say that a certain part of me says, praise the Lord. You know? I mean, how long does it have to take? How, how much anguish? How much corruption? How much sin? You know, we have a tidal wave of sin that's threatening to wash us away. And so the Lord in his mercy, because he loves us, he straightens us out. Like a good parent, right? In this conference on the family, we talk about being a good parent. Sometimes a good parent kicks butt. Plain English. Now, in case you are of the new breed who believes you should never correct your children. Now, I am not going to say you got to slap them upside the side of the head. No, that was my generation. <laughs> and I am not promoting that, although I am not necessarily condemning it either. <laughs> That's up to you. But there are probably other ways to do it. But guess what? You better come up with the other way. And the other way better be at least as effective. In order to use it. In other words, don't be permissive. Be tolerant. Be intelligent. Be responsible. But don't be permissive. You do not want to stand before God and explain to the Father why one of his children is in hell. Because you were lax, indifferent, or cowardly. The Catholic family. That is the guardian and garden of life and holiness. You know, I, I'm not that old, and neither are you, that you can't remember back to when we were young. Now, you remember what it was like. I mean, it, it, might, it might be 80 years ago, 70 years ago, 50 years ago, but you remember. 
And you remember that there was a big difference, morally speaking, between then and now. Now, I love this country. I consider myself a good American, a patriot. I love my country. I really do. But I tell you that my country is still a great country, still the greatest country. But despite our progress, technology, wealth, we've lost a lot. We've progressed technologically and regressed morally in many cases. Every place you look. In the last year, since I was here one year ago, a nation has been shaken to its very foundations, attacked right in the heart of one of the biggest cities in this country, right in the middle of Manhattan. Couldn't you imagine that? I saw it live on television. And Father Flanagan, my superior, was with me. We saw it together. He had been in World War II. He was a Navy SEAL, one of the first. They called him UDT in those days. But that was the beginning of the SEALs. He went in at Normandy first. And he watched it in disbelief and horror. As the towers collapsed. As they hit the Pentagon. The Pentagon? Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> the Pentagon! How do you fly an airplane into that space? We wouldn't have believed that. Not possible. But they did. And Father Flanagan noted with our own planes, with our own planes, with our own planes. That's kind of where it began. The nation was shaken and for a while, to its credit, responded. The lines for confession were longer than they'd been in years. I got on an airplane a couple days after September 11th, and the pilot literally rushed out of the cockpit, embraced me at the door, and said, Boy, am I glad to see you. <laughs> and I said, I'll bet you are. <laughs> the flight attendants came out, same deal. You'd think I was a movie star. They were really glad to have a, a, a priest on board. <laughs> Do you know the first week after September 11th, there wasn't a single abortion in New York City? <laughs> Planned Parenthood had to advertise and do them for free to get business going again. Sometimes it takes an unbelievable tragedy to get us back in touch with reality. You know what? We're back to business as usual. Right back, and it didn't take long either. We've been back to business as usual for quite a while now. Guess what? There's more where that came from. Like a billboard I once saw advertising a Broadway play. I could say this to the world, to the United States. I could say it to the Supreme Court. Say it to everybody. Your arms are too short to box with God. And don't forget it. You want to fight with God? You want to rebel? Want to play games? He'll slap you silly. Oh, he will. He will. Why? Because he's mean? No. Because he's vengeful? No. Because he's merciful. He's merciful. You can pay me now, or you can pay me later. Like the old oil commercial said. Hmm? You know, the greasy old mechanic said, well, you can pay me now, or you can pay me later. Guess what? Cost more later. So you can do your penance now. You can repent now, or you can, you know, spend a couple thousand years in purgatory, or maybe hell. And that's the bottom line world. Culture of death, greatest country in the world. We had better wake up 
we had better straighten up and fly right. Right after September 11th, I began to preach. You know, September 11th, I told you I buried my dad. He had died the previous Friday. I was preaching in Buffalo, New York. And I finished the Friday night session, and I was going to go back to my hotel. And Tamara, my office manager, was with me. She said, wait a minute, i got to talk to you. And she took me aside and said, your dad passed away. And the people were very understanding. They said, we understand if you want to go home right away, cancel. But, you know, my, my father wouldn't like that. Uh, he was always concerned that I be gainfully employed. <laughs> so he wouldn't have wanted me to leave the job unfinished and the mission not accomplished. So, of course, we finished the mission. Then I went home. Monday, I flew down. Tuesday, I watched the events of September 11th on television, mostly live. Then I went, walked into a chapel, saw my father's casket. On top of it were two symbols, an American flag and a crucifix. And immediately I had the thought, Dad had fought in two wars and served two countries. Dad had fought in World War II in the Navy, served his country. Then later in life, he fought in another kind of war, the war of redemptive suffering. In his last seven years of life, he had over 30 surgeries. He was a man acquainted with infirmity. He knew something about pain and suffering. And he did it with dignity. He did it quietly. He did it in holiness. He was a member of what has been called the greatest generation. Some of you are members of that generation. And I began to preach along the lines of what came to me. I, get, I did the homily and the eulogy at my father's funeral, and I preached about serving two countries, United States, heaven, two wars, two countries. Our real homeland is heaven. Two ways are set before you, O man, the way of life and the way of death. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. Choose the truth. Be in love with the truth. Be enamored of the truth. Be totally imbued with the truth, that you might radiate the truth that you might give witness to the truth, that you might live the truth, that you might, if necessary, die for the truth. Be a soldier in the army of life. Be a people of life and a people for life. And wherever the forces of death are at work, take up the battle cry, battle cry of life, battle cry of God's people a holy people, a people of life, from artificial contraception to abortion to murder and mayhem all the way to euthanasia. You've got to fight it. In this great nation, I guarantee you that if more than 60 million Catholics would have lived their faith and been faithful to their faith over the last 30-some years, we'd have a very different country and a very different world. But 75% of Catholics in most places don't even go to Mass on Sunday. They're not receiving the sacraments. They're living in a state of serious sin. A large number of them are engaged in artificial contraception. They have the same mind as the world, the secular world, no different. They are not the salt of the earth, and they are not the light of the world. 
And so the majority of the world wanders around in darkness. So, what's it used for? To preserve? Hmm? You preserve?